Hi, for this video what we're going to do is we're going to construct a Venn diagram and this one contains three sets inside of the universal set. So U represents the universal set. Overall, this represents all of the numbers that can fall within um, the rectangular region. So the numbers 1 through 9 are my values that fall somewhere in at least one of these sets or um, or they will be in one of the sets A, B, C, or on the outside, it could possibly fall on the outside. So remember with a Venn diagram, what we are going to do is we're going to start by drawing a rectangle. It visually helps us to see what's going on. So I would start by drawing a rectangle, and this rectangle represents the universal set. So this is all of the numbers that can appear, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then that universal set is broken into three subsets of the universal set. Um, we have set A, so I'm going to just draw a circle to represent set A. And then we would have a circle to represent set B. And because there is overlap between A and B, we do have to make sure that they are overlapping. And because there is at least one number in common between all three sets, um, when I draw C, it must also overlap both of the other two. So what we have here, let me try that again. Circles are uh, the hardest things to draw freehand. There we go. Um, so what we have is we are going to, there's many ways that you can do this. For me, it's easiest just to look to see where does it fall. Um, for other people, they start to see what do they have in common and start with the overlapping regions and then cross out the universal numbers as they go. Um, I'm just going to go through systematically through the universal set and start with this number here. So starting with number one, I see that the one appears just in set B. So it's just in B. So I would put a one that's inside of circle B, but is not in the overlapping region of A or the overlapping region of C. So basically, the circle A represents everything in A. Um, this little region right here would represent the overlap between A and B. This represents the overlap of A, B, and C. This is the overlap of just set B and C. This is the overlap of sets A and C. And this is just A, just C. So that's what we're going to do. Um, the two, we can see that the two is in all three sets, A, B, and C. So this would go in the middle where all three of them overlap. If you had more than one, you would put it in there, but that's the only one that I have for this one. Moving to three, three is just in B. It's not in either A or C, so I would put a three in B. Four, if we look through this, we can see that four is both in A and C, so we would find the overlap of A and C, so we would put a four here. Um, five is just in C but not in A or B, so it would go in just the white circle where it's not overlapping anything else. Um, five is our next number. I'm oh, sorry, we just did five. So now we're on six. Six is in both B and C, so we would put it here where B and C overlap. Seven is just A. Eight, we can see that it's in both A and B, so it would go in the overlap region for A and B. And then nine is our only number in the universal set that falls outside of um, all three of the other sets, A, B, and C. So like I said, there's more than one way to set this up. Some people set it up by doing the overlap of all three of them. Some people set it up where they, and then they go to the overlap of A and B and the overlap of A and C. For me, it's just easier to start with the universal set and work from there. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.